Welcome to another short video, hopefully short video of Daniel Reviews. Today I'm going to go over the Bamboo Labs Studio 3D printing software and kind of give it just a high level overview of how things work. I know um, before I ever got into 3D printing it certainly seemed very overwhelming and I wasn't sure how everything worked and I was pretty sure it wasn't as simple as uh, Star Trek where you just went up to the replicator, punched in what you want and then just boom came out <laughs> and it, it isn't that easy but it has gotten a lot easier than it used to be so i thought it might be good to go over this uh one time and and uh kind of give everyone a quick view of it i love my p1s printer it has been printing pretty much non-stop since i got it i've had very few issues uh, a couple things that i've had to work on but for the most part it just it's a workhorse and, and i can't recommend it enough it's fantastic that said, if you want to actually print something, then you're going to have to use a, a slicer program. A slicer program is essentially it takes a, a 3D model that you find on Thingiverse or Maker World or wherever on the internet you find a, a, a model. It takes it and it starts slicing it into individual lines of code that it sends to the printer. And the printer starts printing that out according to that line of code for that layer. Then it goes up a layer prints that one according to the line of code, then it goes up and so on and so on. If you have a really tall object, you're gonna have lots of layers. If you have a really thin object, you're gonna have not so many layers, but it could still just be as complicated, but that's essentially how it works, is it kind of stacks it up and builds the, the item as it prints it out. Again, you can use multiple different slicers. There is a uh, Cura slicer, there's Prusa slicer, there's Orca, I think, uh, and then of course there's the Bamboo Labs slicer, and honestly, I like the slicer that Bamboo Labs has put together. One, I kind of like that it's special driven just for their printers. Now you can add in additional printers and they totally support that, that's fine, but it's nice knowing that, hey, this slicer was built specifically with my printer in mind, it's not trying to be all to everything, and it just makes a lot of things a lot easier. So it's a pretty cool program. I'm going to go through it. Um, there are limitations, but I, I think for the most part, it does a really good job. Here I have just booted up Bamboo Lab Studio, essentially. I have a blank plate. There's nothing nothing to print on it. It's just a, uh, you know, a picture of my uh, build plate. So if I want to print something, I, you know, I could either go and open a project, you know, that I've recently saved or somebody else has saved, you know, I could get into one of those or I can import a model. There's different types of files, um, just like a Word doc, there's different type of 3D model uh, files. So there's STL is probably the most famous uh, or most commonly used, but there's 3MF, there's step, there's SVG, OBJ, AMF, so on. Um, you can import here and essentially it just opens up with the dialog and let's uh let's just import this you can import one object or you can import multiple objects if you do multiple objects it's going to ask you whether you want to do a single object with multiple parts uh, i do not i want this to be three individual objects so you can see they're all on top of each other um, you can click and drag to move around uh, this moves like if you're holding the right uh, mouse button this will move it like this and this if you hold the left button it'll spin it around I don't want it all like that so I'm gonna click this real little tool which I think is fantastic I could I could grab and 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 move one of these but I'm going to use this to auto arrange it which makes it a lot simpler and it kind of lays it out in a good pattern it really helps if you got a ton of items okay now I've got an object that's ready to, to perhaps print I have uh, already imported um, a, a couple objects that I wanted to print, and I've got them laid out here on my build plate. I want to go over just the high-level uh, menu, and, and hopefully this will be helpful to you. So at the top, you kind of have your uh, stages, if you will. There's the prepare stage. That's what I'm in right now, where I can move objects around on the build plate, do certain things to them, and prepare them. Uh, it's not ready, obviously, to be printed yet or anything like that, but I can prepare them. The next stage is, of course, the preview. In order to see the full preview, it has to generate um, what is called G-code. G-code is what is sent to the printer to tell the printer how to print these objects. And you can see, um, 
I'm getting a warning here because I've got objects running into each other. Um, that's probably not going to print well. We're going to have a problem. We've got these two objects here overlapping each other. So this is a very good view to know, um, you know how your, your print is going to turn out and just hopefully catch some, some problems before they occur, before you actually send it to it. The next is the device, which is obviously what it sounds like. It's your printer. It's the device, and it can show you status about what's currently going on. Right now, I am printing this. It's 73% done, and it's on layer uh, 27 out of 76. And so that's kind of just a real interesting um, overview that's handy. You can also click this button here. And it will give you a somewhat live preview of the printer. This is really handy when uh, you're, you know, you're far away. Um, you can still kind of monitor how it's doing, which is great. You can see there's a bit of a lag. Um, it's not, you know, it's not, you, you've got to deal with um, logistical things, but very handy, right? And then over here, you've got information about the printer. It's running at 220 degrees out of the hot end. The bed's at 54, 55 degrees to keep the print adhered to it pretty well. Um, then you got your speed running at 100% speed. The lamp is on, um, fans on, all these things, right? Like these are, uh, you know, just kind of standard information. Here I have the AMS connected and I've got my three colors set up in there, or three, I can't count, four colors. And then this would be the external spool on the back. If you're using the AMS, you won't have this. If you don't have the AMS, then this is all you'll have. Right? Okay, that's pretty good overview. Let's move on to the next one, the project. So this is where you can um, set a lot of information about the projects that you're printing. I don't do this too often. I typically just load up a fresh instance of Bamboo Studio, import the models I want, change the th settings, and then away I, uh, and print. And then I just kind of discard everything once I'm done with the print. But if you, particularly if you're going to be printing something over and over again, you definitely want to save the project and in your settings because you know you'll have to um, come back and use this again. So it is very useful and you can get information about the project. Calibration, this <clears throat> not particularly difficult here. You can uh, calibrate the flow rate and flow dynamics now. You can read this information. This You could geek out on this a lot. For the most part, I can tell you the bamboo printer is very well calibrated. You can run the automatic calibration, and you won't need to get into this kind of stuff. If you geek out on this stuff, you want to do manual calibrations, go for it. Not for me. All right, we're back to the main section on the pair. Now I'm going to talk about all this section here on the left, because it can, there's a lot of information and can get a little, uh, little crowded. Let's start at the top. This is where you set... Um, you know, you have presets. You can add additional printers, particularly if you are running multiple printers and different printers. So maybe you have a Bamboo P1S and you've also got the X1 Carbon. You can obviously have the presets uh, and printers there. I only have the one, so I don't really need to mess with that, and I never do. You can also <clears throat> say what kind of plate you have. I've got the textured PEI plate, um, but there are different types, and you can, you can set that there. I don't need to, and I won't. <clears throat> this can be helpful because sometimes this gets out of sync, particularly if you're loading someone else's project in Bamboo Labs. But right here, you can sync the filament um, from you know what you actually have in your AMS. Mine's already synced. I've got the same colors. But if for some reason these got all mixed up or whatever, you can just hit sync, and it'll put them back in alignment. So I've, in my AMS, I currently have white, gray, black, and red. That's correct. Um, you can obviously change that here, but this is only for the project. It doesn't obviously change what is in your AMS. You would have to go change your AMS, right? Okay. Um, next, you have the process. There, there's, oops, sorry, I must have clicked some. You have two toggles here. You got the global project settings, and then you have the object settings. Um, I'm going to save the objects for, for later. Um, just want to point out that this is a toggle. We'll come back to that. You also have whether you can set the advanced control or whether it's kind of like more basic. And all it's doing is hiding some of the settings, right? Um, because some of them, particularly on the advanced, you probably don't need to get into, uh, for a lot of printing projects, I should say, 
you probably don't need to get into the advanced. So if you're just learning and getting out into the process, having it set to you know basic, so to speak, is not a problem. You'll still have all access to the things you need. Next thing, this is very helpful. This is a quick system preset. Um, and it's, you know, you can look at what it, it really is, right? Like it's different settings. So right now um, I'm running on extra draft, which is the, the most, uh, you know, the, the roughest, if you will, of all the print settings. You can easily change this to optimal. Um, this is the, kind of like the, the best middle of the road. It's going to, what it's going to do when you click that is it's going to change some of these settings that are that are here you can either transfer some of these settings to the new one or you can discard them um, if you transfer them they'll be applied but what this is really pointing out if you look at these numbers is it's how thin your layer lines are so 16 is uh, 0.16 millimeters kind of like what they consider to be optimal middle of the road but you can get down to as low as 0.08 extra fine so if you've got something with a lot of detail or you just want to have really really thin lines on your on your printed object you can set that let's go ahead and do that and then let, let me see if i can we're going to go ahead and hit the slice plate to generate the code and then we'll see a preview so if you zoom in on these and you look at your layer lines you can see these are very 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 tiny lines right very fine now if i go all the way up to extra draft and slice it look at those lines much chunkier and that's what you're going to notice in your print um, the alt the positive is that you get much faster build times right or total print times the other downside to the rugged or uh, extra draft is not just that you get thicker lines um, you know and on something like this object it's not gonna matter about my thicker lines but it's not gonna be as strong either when you think about it because you have a lot less layers and something could cr break along one of these layer lines because they're so thick they don't have the same adhesion to each other as you would get with the you know extra fine or one of the lower ones so this even though they're um, you know you have much smaller lines you're just gonna have a stronger object as well so that's don't think of this just as quality. Think of this as strength as well. Okay, so that's these are ways you can just change things at a, at a very, very high level. Um, now, if you need to get more into the details, that's what these tabs are for. So let's look at quality. You can manually change this here. I don't think you really need to do that personally. I don't do anything with the quality. Um, the others might have different opinions. Strength, I definitely do touch this. This is kind of the default um, wall loops. Okay, so this is going to be like the, the walls around your object, right? So what it's doing is they're saying two layers where it's going to be just like solid walls, right? Before it starts doing any kind of like <clears throat> interior support, you can change that and say, you know what? Um, I really want stronger walls. I'm going to put four layers or eight layers, whatever the actual model itself will support. You know, you, if you, you got a thin object like here, this is pretty thin and you put you know, 100, obviously, <laughs> it's not going to fit 100 lines in there. So, you know, you've got to be realistic. <clears throat> and top and bottom shells is kind of the same thing. So the wall loops are the, you know, the sides of your object. The, the top and bottom are exactly what they sound. Uh, you, and you can have your layers. Right now, default sixth, I think that's pretty good. I, I usually don't ever have to change that too much. The infill is what I, I do touch a lot. So on these... 50% is going to be very good for, for these. I wish I could. I don't know if I can show you. Um, I'll try to come back and show you what that. Well, actually, uh, we're on the preview. Let's see. There is a way. Let's clear that out. Where you can see the layers. Um, how do I. How do I do that? I thought there was a slider somewhere. I might have to come back to that then but basically <clears throat> it's the infill pattern inside the uh well here this will show you okay inside the object after you get the the bottom shell you know six layers and the walls on the side of two layers or four layers in this case then it's going to start doing some sort of pattern inside it honeycomb cubic all these different things 
Um, and you can geek out on whether which one's stronger or best or whatever. I don't really have to mess with the type of pattern inside. What I mess with is this. If you want it to be super, super strong, obviously you put it all the way up to 100%. It's going to change to a different pattern type. It's going to be very dense. You're going to use a lot more filament. Um, but it's going to be the strongest object that you can print. On many of your prints, you're not going to need that, right? You don't need to use that much filament. You don't need something that strong. Um, you can, I think the default is 15%. And it still results in a, you know, it's going to be a light object, but it's going to be fairly strong. And so you kind of just play with this to get the, you know, the level that you want. So this is a setting I change a, a lot, depending on what I'm printing. I'm going to make it, you know, stronger or weaker, so to speak, based on what the object is. Lastly is support. So if you've got a complicated object, these are not complicated. They can be printed just as is. But if it's if you do have something more tricky, you're going to need support. Let's take this, and I'm just going to flip this around. So let me show you. If I try to print this like just like it is, we're going to have a real problem because the printer is going to go, it builds from the bottom up, right? So it prints, prints, prints. It's going to print this part. And then it's going to start printing out here, and eventually you're going to get way out over something with nothing underneath it to support it. That's going to cause a real problem, and it's probably going to fail. Um, because it needs what they call support. So you can enable support. It'll do an auto thing. And let's just slice this and you'll, it'll show you what that support's going to look like on this object. So look at this. You can see it's building out this support here so that this part of the object will be supported when it gets to printing that part. The idea is that you can just break these off. Sometimes they break off really easy and sometimes they definitely do not. I prefer most of the time to use a tree uh, type of support and I'll show you the difference between that it looks like a tree right but you can see not nearly as much of it is on the object itself it's a lot thinner where it touches the object so it's easier to break and not not super easy but it is easier to break and would be an easier support if I needed to print something like this you obviously want to try to print not having to use supports as best you can but depending on what you're printing there's just no way around it sometimes you can adjust the angle you can say whether you want it on the build plate only so sometimes it will it's a very complicated object it'll use tree supports on the object itself otherwise they come up from the build plate and lean in like that <clears throat> last section here is the bed adhesion and the prime tower if you're doing a multiple a multi-color print um, this will get enabled by default, and what it will do is if you have two colors, let's um, let's go back and change one of these to black. Now we have a, it's creating a prime tower, so it's going to print all of these objects in, in the white, and it's going to print this one in the black, and then what it does is it goes over here to this prime tower and kind of discards any of the black that's in the, in the print head before it starts printing the next layer of white over here. It's going to dramatically slow down your, your print time. But you can change this. Uh, by default, I think it's like 40 by 40. I usually change mine to 20 by 20 as a prime tower. Uh, it's just personal preference. The other thing you can do is you can flush into the infill. So it's saying like, okay, you can take that black that you've got in this in the print head and you can put it on the inside of one of these objects where it's not going to show. So that would you know, help... Um, reduce some of your waste all right that is that is it that's the basics of bamboo uh studio like i said you can turn on the advanced and we can get a little bit deeper into the settings but not for this i don't think we're going to do that we're just going to stay pretty basic and that should get you around at least the initial parts okay that's the basic overview there's a, a lot more you can do in uh the, the slicer I'll get into how you print ob or, uh, paint objects for multiple colors, duplicate, scale, clone, all that. I, I think we'll save that in a separate video. I just wanted to give you a high-level overview. If you import a model and want to print it, this should get you up and running. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves. Thanks.